Diamondback is a steel roller coaster made by Bolliger and Mavillard, located at Kings Island in Mason, Ohio. Inspired by the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, the trains were designed with a rattlesnake head for the lead car and staggered stadium-style seating, making the trains longer than most B&M hypercoasters and consisting of a more open feeling than most roller coasters in existence. This is one of four B&M hypercoasters to feature this style of seating, as well as the first roller coaster in the United States to feature this train design. Despite Kings Island receiving a relocated coaster from the former Geago Lake Amusement Park in Aurora, Ohio, the park was hyping this up as their tallest, fastest, and meanest coaster ever when it was announced. Now, they mentioned meanest instead of longest in the announcement video because the Beast was, and still is, the longest coaster in the park. Diamondback, however, is still a relatively long ride, featuring about a mile of track which, according to some calculations, is roughly 72% of the length for the Beast. When it opened to the public, it instantly received excellent reviews, with many calling it the best ride in the park. Even though they invested in four other coasters afterwards, including a coaster that's even taller than Diamondback, the general public and some coaster enthusiasts still call it their favorite ride in the park. While it's not quite my favorite there, it's definitely top three for me and I believe it deserves all the praise it gets. The layout is well designed because whereas most B&M hypers feature straight out and back or L-shaped layout, Diamondback is a mix of both an out and back and twister layout. Rather than just going straight into the hill or banking at the top or second half, it constantly curves into its airtime hills, creating some decent positives. And the first half just features large hill after large hill, and they all give decent to great floater airtime, especially that third hill. Some other cool and unique features include being placed into the woods of Rivertown, giving it a more secluded feel despite being one of the easier B&M hypers to film without leaving the park. It ends off with a visually appealing splashdown effect that can be seen anywhere in the Rivertown area, Plus, the sound it makes at the bottom of the first drop I'm pretty sure is distinct to this ride. Again, most b and hypers make a similar sound when going through a valley, that being just a mild roar. Dimeback has the same roar as most of the other hypers, but the train makes a loud rattling noise as it reaches the bottom of the first drop. I find that sound very interesting, and I'm not sure why it has that or whether it was done on purpose or not. Okay, to be honest though, I know it's just the wheels making that sound. I'm just not sure what caused it to occur. I don't think it's a bad sound, it's just an observation. Something else you'll notice is that in some shots, the ride looks much better than others. Originally, the ride had a color scheme of crimson red track with supports that were both yellow and tan. This was an interesting choice because only the lift hill and part of the first airtime hill had yellow supports, while the rest of them were tan. Although the track is still painted red, the supports now have a mushroom brown color, giving the ride more of a snaky look to it that I feel blends a little better with the country aspect of Rivertown. Even though plenty of B&M Hypers have received repaints, this is the only one to receive a color change so far, and it's a striking new color. The original color scheme was different, but it needed a repaint for years, and they finally gave it one. Regardless of its color scheme, I'm going to give this ride a 9 out of 10. This is one of those coasters that makes Kings Island the park that it is today, along with the Beast, and it's a well-deserved addition to the park that's still popular to this day. Almost every time I ask someone what their favorite ride Kings Island is, they'll say either Orion or this. The only thing preventing me from giving it a higher score is that the ride isn't glossy smooth. There is a noticeable rattle that pops up during the valleys, especially in the valley after the turnaround where the train kind of jackhammers a little. In a way, I can excuse this since it's 15 years old, but I've been on much older B&Ms that are smoother than this. Even the smaller wooden coaster next door, Mystic Timbers, is smoother and more rewritable than Dimeback to me. However, the airtime absolutely makes up for it, allowing me to still really enjoy the ride experience, and once again, it deserves all the praise that it gets. If you can overlook the rattle, that's great, because I definitely recommend you slither your way into the park's second tallest roller coaster.